Remember Drupal, the fun open source alternative to WordPress? As soon as I put in my stream title, Jeff Gearling showed up because he was an open source contributor largely because of it. Drupal's well-regarded in a lot of circles as one of the first like really big web framework open source projects. And I know a lot of people, myself included, were able to get into open source much earlier as a result of it. I think we also have some rose-tinted glasses because it seems like things in the Drupal world aren't too great. And when I saw this comment on Hacker News, I knew I wanted to break it down because, uh, yeah, this is a funny one. I think the pain of the PHP ecosystem has obviously been largely resolved with modern tools like Laravel, but man... <laughs> Man, some of the old ones are in a rough, rough spot. And if you think upgrading your React app to a new version is hard, you have no idea. This is a story about the attempts to upgrade from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8. And this was on the HN thread. What is the most painful developer setup guide you've ever experienced? In the web, in the PHP world, the Drupal 7 to 8 plus upgrade process was miserable. It's really more of a complete rewrite with close to zero code reuse. But the guides didn't make that very clear and the technical docs were just as bad. For such a big project, it was the worst documentation I've ever seen. I got a few weeks in before realizing, man, it's probably a good time to jump ship from Drupal altogether. We ended up moving to Next.js instead. <sighs> Wouldn't ever think you'd hear somebody from the PHP world dropping that in their paragraph, especially in a world where everybody seems to want PHP back again, but we'll go into that in a minute. According to them, this was the best technical decision that they've ever made as a dev. Not only was the migration much easier, the end result was also much cleaner, the hosting much cheaper, and the devs much easier to hire for. And that was like half a decade ago. Yeah, I, I don't think we understand this point anywhere near as well as we should. It's easy to look in the past with rose tinted glasses. I've seen a lot of people say, man, I want to go back to the FTP days where I just dragged and dropped my web app to my server and it just worked. Those weren't good days. I don't miss them at all. Do you know what's way cooler? Get pushing and having your website update. The fact that modern CI is at a point where I can just go use my terminal, finish the work I'm working on, use the thing I'm already using, Git, and once it merges, it's live, that's magic. The introduction, not just of continuous deployment, but of good primitives that allow continuous deployment to be set up with literally one click, that is so much better than anything I used to experience in the PHP world by like a lot, a lot, a lot. And you can actually use some of those things in modern tools too. Uh, are we, am I gonna nerd slight myself with this? I'll be honest, y'all. I just nerd snipe myself a bit. I wanted to show how easy it was to deploy PHP on Vercel. And due to one dumb bug I ran into, it wasn't quite as easy. Vercel, please fix. I'll chat with you guys later. But once this is set up, it is actually really nice. So this is a basic PHP project. It all works through this API folder. So we have index.php. If you already know PHP code, this probably looks familiar. We're using this to return JSON with the time, the date, and tech Vercel. Cool. So as I said, we're not going to use the classics, everyone's favorite things. We're not going to use any FTP here. We're going to use Git. Hopefully you've already Git initted, but if you haven't, do that. Git add all. Don't use dash A, by the way. Use dash P if you can. I'll do a whole video about that in the near future. Commit init. And now we need to do something with this. I can't git push because we don't have anything yet. So I'm going to do my favorite, GitHub repo create using the GitHub CLI. And now I have to hit enter far too many times because all of their defaults don't select even obvious ones. But now that we've went through 10 flags, now we have this PHP demo project. But we know how GitHub works. How do we actually deploy this? Setting this up in the past, I'll admit, was not fun. There's a reason CI and CD were kind of scary words for a while. You can set up GitHub actions to do a bunch of things. That's really cool and all. But I want to go a bit further. I want to take advantage of all these modern new DX things. So we're going to go to Vercel, add a new project, hit import on PHP demo, and then hit deploy. And now, in just a moment, look at that. Now we're getting this JSON response from Vercel. I can even curl and get it in my terminal. And that's being served through PHP. So how do I update it? What if I want to add the thing I always should add more? Subscribe to Theo. Now that I've added this in here, all I have to do to deploy it, git add. I'll use dash p correctly here. Git commit updated JSON. Did I forget a comma? I did forget a comma. Thank you. Cool. And now that we push this, it auto deploys. I could have made a pull request, which I'll showcase in just a second. But now that I've done that, I go back to the project. The new deployment is already started. But what if we want to, I don't know, work on a pull request that might change things entirely? Like maybe we have a different endpoint that is, I don't know, uh, goodyoutubers.php. And here we could put some really well formatted JSON. First, Theo. Second, Prime. Third, Fireship. So now we have this well-encoded JSON file, clearly the right way to use JSON. Git add it, but we don't want to push this straight to main. Let's make a branch. Check out dash b theo slash 
I don't know, YouTuber endpoint. And now that we've created this branch, I can ghpr, or I should commit the changes first, get status, get commit, new endpoint, ghpr create. Once again, far too many options. It doesn't even auto open in the browser. But now we have this pull request. What's really magic about modern workflows like this are that they just let you do that. You now have a preview build that has this new functionality. Play is still building, but once it's done building, we'll be good to go. What did we call it? It was uh, goodyoutubers.php. Wait, that's returning the same thing. Oh, I made a mistake. It's a good thing I didn't deploy that straight to main. Well, if we hop in here and we go to the Vercel JSON, we see we can actually define what pages go where. So I can change this to be source slash YouTubers. And this can go to API index uh, instead of index good YouTubers.php. Git status, git add dash p, or git add dash p, git commit dash m, fix routing, and git push. And now that change is going to be deployed on the preview build for our pull request. So it's very easy for us to see what is and isn't working for a code reviewer to come in and confirm things. These workflows are great, especially for teams. I'll be honest, I file pull requests on my own projects even when I'm working solo because I like the workflow and having these pieces of change energy isolated. It's really nice to have pull requests that represent the things that you were doing instead of just having a bunch of commits that are total nonsense and branches that you forget about. But if you're working on a team, this stuff's essential. Sharing a endpoint that you're dumping things into via FTP is not viable for a team. But this stuff is built for teams and it works great. So if I go here and I now go to YouTubers, not found. What I forgot was to specify to Vercel which runtime to use for that new PHP file. Now that that works, we're good to go. And if we want to add this to the main site, all we have to do is click the merge button. And now that it's merged, that's going to automatically deploy to our real site. I don't know if this is just my functional programming brain, but the idea that we don't have a separate state that we're tracking from our code. Because if you're using Git and then FTPing your files up, the stuff you're doing in Git and the state of the server are now separated. Those are two different states that have to be tracked and managed. If you have something like continuous deployment, the thing that's deployed is an inferred state from the actual code base. You have one state instead of two, which makes these things so much easier to deal with. So again, we have this link here. If I go to slash YouTubers, it serves the new JSON, all full of people that you should subscribe to. I think this is cool. I don't miss the PHP FTP days at all. The fact that we can use these things with all these modern tools is an awesome thing. And I hope this helps showcase why I like it so much. Enough about all that, though. Let's go back to this comment that just nerds like me far, 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 far too hard. As they were saying, all the things they were discussing before were like half a decade ago. And the migration process has stayed so bad for so long that so many companies using Drupal that they've had to keep delaying the version 7 end of life. The V7 end of life was supposed to be in 2021. Yeah, almost four years ago. But they pushed it back a year, then another year, and now it's been pushed back all the way to 2025. Imagine that. Imagine trying to deprecate your thing in 2021, your thing from 2017. But since upgrading to the new one is so hard, you're stuck maintaining that until 2025. People were discussing earlier about how hard it is to like deal with all the new versions of Node and packages and all these things. I can take an old NPM project. I can take an old Node project from like version 0 0.4. It's a funny meme to mention that version if you know where, what's been going on recently. But I could take an old 0.4 Node project, pull it up, NPM install, and it will probably work. It'll work a lot better if it's in the era of package lock files, but it will work almost certainly regardless. Even if you're on a new version of Node, you can install the packages from an old version of Node and most of the time, these things just work for us. There are exceptions, like moving from Vue 2 to Vue 3, or moving from Webpack to another bundler. But Node itself, even with major version bumps, tends to be fine. PHP, to be fair, is similar here. But Drupal seems to not be in the slightest. <laughs> because people have struggled so much with these upgrades that at least they're doing the right thing, and they're maintaining and doing security updates for the old version. Because it'd be terrifying people were on Drupal 7, and it wasn't maintained, and it wasn't safe. So props to them for that, but it seems like people are struggling a lot. To be fair, the average Drupal user isn't somebody that's excited about doing upgrades and learning new things and making changes. That's just not what the Drupal community and generally the PHP community is about. They're there because they don't want to do those types of things. They want to have a code base that works the same way it did 20 years ago. So I feel bad for them because these developers on Drupal kind of got... I don't want to say scammed, but they definitely didn't get what they were expecting because the reason they were on and stayed on PHP into the late 2010s was that promise of consistency. But Drupal entirely re-architected everything, which is a bit scary for people who had committed to the old architecture, which is most Drupal users. People aren't starting with Drupal today. Most Drupal users come from old Drupal code bases. So having a new architecture 
theoretically could make them more competitive with modern solutions, but in reality, it's just hurting their existing users. As the commenter here says, I don't think it's ever going away at this point. There's an entire cottage industry with their own conferences all around supporting old Drupal versions. Think about that. A whole set of conferences just for old Drupal versions. Then again, we have conferences for Super Smash Bros. Melee, a game from the early 2000s, but like, I can't believe we have that in code. The fact that old Drupal is so important to so many companies that they have their own community and ecosystem is actually kind of funny. And coming from the JavaScript world, the thought of there being like a React 15 community is just funny to me. There's the React community. The chaos of Drupal makes the JavaScript ecosystem seem simple in comparison, and it makes WordPress look like the epitome of a well-maintained project. <laughs> This is a sentence that when I saw it initially, I realized I had to make a video because describing WordPress as the epitome of a well-managed project, if you've ever dealt with WordPress, is fucking hilarious. But this says a lot about how painful Drupal was for this dev and for a lot of people in the community. That's just sad. And as much as I love JavaScript, I would never call our ecosystem simple. I don't really love it that much. That's an aside. But JavaScript is not simple. <laughs> but when you're dealing with the things that these devs were trying to upgrade to an entirely new architecture with no compatibility, that sucks. Wrapping up, they said, it was their first and last time working with Drupal. It's the only software they've ever used that they flat out hated and swore to never touch again. I love this outro, by the way. If someone offered me a million dollars a year to maintain a Drupal instance, I'd instead pay them to never talk to me again. That migration scarred me for life. This is such a good story. I love this. I, I love when people express in detail the pain they went through and what it led them to. I, I know rage bait's not usually productive or useful, but I think this really well highlights the contrast between what you would expect from something like Drupal and the reality that Solar Dev experienced. This is a great comment. I'm surprised it didn't get more attention. Sorry for all the traffic it's going to get as a result of me doing this. And a quick shout out to Flavio. If you don't know Flavio already, he made the AHA stack, which is an Astro HTMX and Alpine stack for doing good full stack web applications without having to go all in on client side JavaScript. It's actually a really cool framework. I haven't had a chance to play with it. But if you're looking for a new stack, definitely check that out. Thank you to Flavio for bringing this to my attention because this, this has been stuck in my brain since I saw it. Till next time, peace nerds.